Hello, I'm Moira Alderson with the BBC News. America's film and television business is grinding to a halt today as tens of thousands of Hollywood actors join writers in the first industry-wide walkout for more than six decades. The shutdown will affect all productions employing members of the Screen Actors Guild, even if they're outside the United States. Here's Peter Bowes. Just about every film production, television show that is being made here in Los Angeles and indeed around the world involving members of the Screen Actors Guild, they will come to a halt. In fact, many of those productions have already stopped because of the writer's strike, which has been going on now for for several months, pretty much over the same kinds of issues of residuals or, or repeat fees and concerns about artificial intelligence, the use of AI to recreate the image of an actor digitally. The Constitutional Court in Guatemala has suspended a lower court order that effectively disqualified one of the candidates in next month's presidential runoff. Gabriela Aguilera is one of the magistrates of the Supreme Electoral Tribunal. We believe this makes clear that on August the 20th we will have the second round between the two parties. They had earlier indicated some doubts, but we believe this should clear them up. The parties can now start their electoral campaigns for the second round. The anti-corruption candidate Bernardo Arevalo welcomed the decision, saying democracy would prevail. A prosecutor had accused his party of forging signatures in its registration. The attempt to stop him from running against the former First Lady Sandra Torres provoked international concern. She had suspended her campaign in support of her rival, saying Guatemalans who voted for him should be respected. The Indian Space Agency is making final preparations for the launch of a rocket that will attempt to land a rover on the moon. The Chandrayaan-3 spacecraft will go into orbit before deploying a lander near the south pole of the moon. Arunade Mukherjee has the details. There is excitement in this small coastal island of Sri Harikota where a rocket stands tall waiting to be fired up into the sky. A soft landing on the lunar surface will mean India will now be among the few countries like the US, China and Russia to have achieved the feat. Once it lands on the southern pole of the moon, a rover will be deployed for research. It happens to be the same area where India's first moon mission 15 years ago discovered the possible presence of water. The U.S. has experienced its worst six months of mass killings since records began almost two decades ago. Since January, there have been 28 mass killings, defined as when four or more people are killed over a short space of time. All but one involved a firearm. 140 people died in the attacks. BBC News. There have been further Russian drone attacks on Ukraine overnight. Ukraine says it shot down 16 of 17 Iranian-made explosive drones. But the authorities in the central city of Krivirir say a number of buildings were damaged and a man was injured in a strike there. Investigators in Singapore have issued an arrest notice for one of the city-state's richest people in connection with a probe into high-level corruption. The billionaire hotelier Ong Beng Seng hasn't been charged, but he's been asked about his interactions with Singapore's transport minister, S. Ishwaran. Mr. Ishwaran took leave from his ministerial job this week because of the investigation. No details have been disclosed. Singapore is consistently ranked in surveys as one of the world's least corrupt countries, and such inquiries involving government ministers are rare. Australia has appointed Michelle Bullock as its next central bank governor, the first woman to lead it, in its 63-year history. She'll start in September, taking over from Philip Lowe, who's effectively been sacked after a series of highly unpopular interest rate rises. The Prime Minister, Anthony Albanese, said the new governor would provide strong leadership. Michelle will be the first female governor since the independent RBA was founded. After close to four decades of service to the RBA, most recently as the deputy governor, Ms Bullock is eminently qualified to lead this national institution. France has posthumously awarded the Légion d'honneur to a journalist killed working in Ukraine. Armand Soldin, who was 32, died in a rocket attack in May. He was part of a team of reporters with Agent France Press embedded with Ukrainian soldiers near the besieged city of Bakhmut. His death sparked a war crimes investigation. Born in Sarajevo in Bosnia, he'd fled fighting there with his family, coming to France when he was barely three years old. BBC News.